Conversations on this afternoon, Sunday afternoon. What is this? The 21st of November. The 21st of November. We're already here. November 21. Oh my God, how awesome it is. And we are a couple of days, a few days away from Thanksgiving. And what an awesome thing to know that we are in the, the season of giving thanks. Giving thanks in all things. Sometimes we don't we don't understand why we're giving the whole of one second. We're not understanding why things are going on or whatever the Bible says and everything give thanks in the midst of a pandemic, give thanks in the midst of um, whatever situations could be going on, give thanks. That's all he, he requires of us. He doesn't want it to be the perfect situation. He doesn't care if all the stuff is going on. He just said, give thanks. If you give me thanks, I will come in your midst and do whatever needs to be done to fix your situation, to enhance your situation, to lift you up. But it's your duty just to what? Give him thanks. That's all he desires. That's all he requests of us. Give him thanks. So I am, I, this is one of my favorite times of the year. Christmas is the ultimate, but I know once Thanksgiving comes, <laughs> Christmas is on its way. And that's so, to me, it starts from Thanksgiving. That's why I, I tell, uh, I'm, I'm not mad that people start putting up the decorations early because to me, that just extends the whole celebration for me because I could do it for months and months and months, because it's just an awesome time. First, we're celebrating Jesus and we're giving thanks. We're starting off with giving thanks because the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise, give thanks unto him and bless his name. So we're giving him thanks and everything. And then we're going to right into celebrating his birth because that's what it's all about. He came that we could be saved, that we could be redeemed back to our original state, our what we were supposed to be doing, our original mission. He came to do it. And he did it with class. He did it in grand style. And we're here as a testament to what was done. So this whole time for me is just celebrating who Jesus is and what he's done and what he's going to do and how he keeps us and preserves us and provides for us and does all these amazing things for us. And the thing is, it's different things that we don't even know. There's some things we don't even know God is doing, but he's doing it on our behalf. And we are here just to give him Thanks. Oh my God. I am just, I'm elated. And if you didn't, if you missed it, yesterday was our Empowered Value Forum 2021. I mean, it was such an awesome time. I had, I mean, with me, because I'm managing when I'm doing all this stuff, I'm speaking, I sang, and then I still have to manage all the behind the scenes production. So it was a little task, but I enjoyed the whole thing because it was just awesome just to hear the words from my dad, from my mom, and even what God gave me to share on, on creativity and how God has created us to create. And I just hope it blessed you. And you can go back to see it. If it's on Facebook Live, usually you can find it. You can uh, look it up and see it, whether you go into Father Magazine and, and you can see the archives. You can also see it on YouTube because everything we put on here we record it and put it right on YouTube, Empower Value Forum 2021. It was an awesome time, and I hope you enjoyed it because we enjoyed putting it together for you. And we hope we can do this every year for years to come. Also, don't forget, to go to the favor of a great God.com. We have new things going on out there. We um we added something to our giving fund, giving and funding page. And when you see it on the different pages we have on there, the giving and funding page. And the charitable uh, branch of our uh, of our organization is Fava Reach, F-A-V-A-R-E-A-C-H. 
And that's just to create ventures, to give to human trafficking victims, to give to people who are in need. We just think, we just know that when God blesses you, he blesses you to bless others. We have the mask on there and we have a couple of items in our father market that have father reach on them and proceed, though the mask goes straight to that, to um, our father reach organization. But the, the other items, proceeds from them, goes towards supporting ventures with where there's or other organizations right now we're supporting the A21A, the letter A21 organization, the Christian organization that's doing amazing things to, uh, for human traffic victims, human trafficking victims all over the world. I think they're based in some part of Europe, Australia or whatever they're based in. And they're doing it all over Europe, all over America, and they're doing awesome things. The, the, the person in, in charge of it who, or who started was Christine Kane. She's one of the very renowned ministers, and she's doing awesome stuff for that. And I mean, and just getting young people back to what God has called them to, and we support that organization. But we're also, as an organization, trying to come up with ventures and ideas that we could use to help empower people. We don't just want to come and give you the courses and all that awesome. By the way, don't forget Empower Value Forum course, go on there, get in on it, purchase it. If you purchase it to someone, get started on and getting empowered, getting to understand your value and then sharing, having, helping to empower the value in other people. We also just recorded, oh my God, that's why I had a long weekend. This weekend was amazing, but very tedious. Uh, we recorded the Be Your Business course and now we're going to get into editing and producing it so we can put it out there so you can it can be available to you so we just recorded it so these two things don't forget go out there purchase them get them it's not just benefiting us where because you're paying for it it's also benefiting you and we want this to be a movement throughout hopefully the world we just want people one by one we think if we change one person at a time we can help change the climate change the culture to get people to understand who they are because it's, we're still, we're not there. And a lot of people are, are, are closer than others, but there are too many people and too many uh, 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 news um, items about people killing themselves, people killing other people, people stealing from other people. People, when you hear all this kind of mess, let me tell you something, that's what it means. They don't understand their value. We have governments going crazy, terrorism. My God have mercy. If you want to find it something where people don't understand their value, that's it right there. Because if you understand what God is putting you, you will never want to terrorize and kill people and bomb people thinking you're going to heaven because you do it. All these things are because we don't understand who our creator is, why he created us, and the value he created us with, and the purpose he has given to us. So we just want to go out there and one by one change the community, the world, the national, the world climate, the global climate, that people would understand their value and act accordingly. It's important. Okay, so I mentioned that we got the course of so Back to Father Reach. So we want to also, we're creating ventures. And one thing I, what I mentioned in the Be Your Business course, but God has been putting on my heart is, if you, if you ever read the story of Ruth and Boaz, Ruth was, um, she was allowed, Boaz, what he did was he was this rich um, guy in Israel, I think it was, I think it was in Israel, one, one of these nations, in, but Israelite, I guess. And he had this lot of good land and he had, uh, it was wheat and whatever it is that people could glean so they could take home and make flour and all that stuff. And he would always, he made a point of view to leave a portion for the people who were underprivileged, the people who were poor. So they could go there and get it for free instead of buying it. And he always did that. So what he did when he met, when, when he, the story was when he met Ruth, he allowed her to go there and glean for her and Naomi, because remember her husbands, all their husbands had died. Naomi's husband died and um, Ruth was married to one of Naomi's sons. He died and another son she had died and, uh, and his wife Orpah decided not to come with Naomi, but Ruth came with Naomi. So they were single women with no husbands and they didn't have any much money and he allowed her to glean there. And that's where she met him. And I think Naomi kind of directed her there. She met him and they got married and all that stuff. So from that, God has been showing me, oh, and God, if you look through the Bible, God always wanted to set aside something for people who could not help themselves, who didn't have enough. So our organization, Father Reach, is the portion that we want to set aside for people who don't have enough, for people who are victims, for people who are in slavery, for people who, who are in violent situations they can't and they can't help themselves. We want to set that apart. So that's what we're 
Father Reach is all about, to create, to help people and empower people. And it's not just empowering them to just give them money. We want to empower them to give them, to help them start their own businesses, help them help, help them get their own homes, help them get their education. When, when you empower people, it's not just about giving them a handout. It's about educating them and uh, uh, kind of instilling in them the values and the principles they need to thrive in life, not just survive, but thriving life. And you, you have to change their mindset. You have to change their environment. You have to change their education level. You have to let them know who they are and what they can and cannot do so they can now stand on their own and thrive and help other people. So that's what our, our goals, goal is, is to create these different ventures. And they sound very, very, I mean, big right now, but nothing is too big for God. And that's what we want to help you to help us as we build those ventures, as we go into those different ventures, one at a time, and we want to make sure that they're clothed, they're fed, they're educated, they come out vibrant in the earth, women, children, men, whatever it is, so that their value can be seen and they could change the world. Because when you help someone, you don't know what you're helping, you don't know who you're helping, you don't know what you're helping. So a lot of these people are very brilliant, but you'll never know because they've been so downtrodden and pulled down for so long, they can't even figure out where they're supposed to, to, to crawl up from. And we, it's our duty as people who are empowered to see these people thrive and get up, stand up on your feet and do some stuff and affect the culture for God. And that's what we're about. So we're gonna be, and on our giving page, we have just introduced a new donation segment where you can go in and if you don't want to purchase an item, you can, do, you can donate as little as $10, $5, whatever. And all of that will go towards us building this uh, uh, father reach into something that will change lives in a big way. We, we don't do anything small because God is big. And that's what we want to do. So please help us any way you can. If you, if you have your extra dollars, your extra cent, put it in there so we could do what God has called us to do. And we also have on the front page and the giving page, there's a QR code on there. And if you scan it, you get your phone, you can have, if you have the QR code app, or you can even use your camera. I think you need the QR, QR code app. There's, a, there's apps out there for it. And you scan that, that um, QR code, is that what it is? Yeah. Then it will automatically take you to that giving, um, that giving segment. So you can see the donations, pick your donation, enter your information and send it right away. So if you're, if you're driving down the road or whatever, and you don't have uh, your computer in front of you, if you go onto the, the mobile, the, the, our um, website on your phone, you can just, or on somebody else's phone, you can scan it and you get straight to it and you can give donations wherever you are. So this, these are the different items we've added to the website for your convenience, for our convenience as well. So we can make it easier for you to give and support not just, and like I said, we're, of course, it's a, if, if we are a business, we want to make money, we want to make profit, but most importantly, we want our impact. And if you heard anything I said this weekend, if you, you're going to see the, the, everything we talk about on the online courses, there's going to be another one coming up. You're going to hear about the impact, our impact. We want people's lives to be changed. When they hear about the, 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 the father reach or the consulting or whatever, we want them to know that we're about empowering people changing people's life for the good. We don't bring down, we don't destroy, we don't break down, we only build up and we build to last. When you come out of here, you're coming out to do things and you're lasting and you have integrity and you have character and you have morals and you're doing big things and God is glorified by your life. That's what we're about. We're not about everybody else doing this and what we're doing, what everybody else does. No, we're just about doing what God said for us to do so that we can be impacting and we can help you to be impacting as well. So that's my little promo for today. Thank you. <laughs> but it was an awesome weekend. I'm if you can tell, if you can tell, I am really tired because I mean, I did, we did, I did a lot. We did a lot, but we got it done. And I thank God that whenever we, that's one thing I always want to, whenever I set my mind to do, whenever God tells us to do something, we get it, we execute well and we get it done and it is profitable to the kingdom of God. And that's our goal. We don't want to ever have something that we set and it doesn't get done. You have to go through with it and be consistent so God can be glorified and people can know that you're consistent and that you stand by your word and you get done what you set out to do. And it's important to do that and have people know that about you. Ooh, okay, God said. Now today for our topic, empowered gratitude. And that is like very, 
that's fitting for the season. And I just was like, I'm all about everybody knows empowerment. Empowered gratitude, giving thanks, empowered gratitude. Empower, say, I am empowered in my gratitude. I have empowered gratitude. I have an attitude of gratitude. Always declare that. I have an attitude of gratitude. Awesome thing to have. Um, in gratitude, gratitude is usually has to do a lot with perspective, your perspective on situations. Because the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. So it's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But to give thanks, you got to have a perspective. Because if sometimes some things happen and they don't necessarily motivate Thanksgiving or gratitude. They motivate sometimes you getting angry, getting mad, getting sad, getting depressed, but they don't necessarily motivate gratitude. So you have to have a perpetual attitude of gratitude, continuous, no matter what. It's not based on situations and circumstances and people. It's based on the fact that God said to give thanks. And if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Last, if we look at perspective, let's, let's look at that definition again. One is the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression, the right impression of their height, width, depth, and position in relation to each other when viewed from a particular point. An example of that, a perspective drawing. Second definition, a particular attitude toward or way of regarding something, a point of view a particular attitude toward or way of regarding something, a point of view. That's what we want to have when we have an empowered gratitude mindset. We want to have a particular attitude about everything that comes our way. In everything, give thanks. The good, the bad, the ugly, every, in everything, give thanks. God is going to work. If it's not that good, God is going to work it out for my good. If it's good, thank you, God, because you allowed me to be blessed in that way. You allowed things to happen to me. Now. Today, I got a blessing. I have to say it. I mean, I, I was shocked. I mean, and and I'm, and I'm that's part of what I'm going to talk about today. When you pray for blessings, you don't know how they're going to come, but you should expect them. And a lot of times, I think we don't expect them. I expect, I, there's some things I'm expecting, but there's Sometimes I still get shocked by God. And I'm like, there's one song that um, I think I can't say that uh, I think it was Tasha Cobbs and she's talking about OMG. Oh my God, God just blows your mind with just little things. And he just tells you, you're okay, I got you. Don't even worry about it because I got you. And that's the things God does for us. And we have to be thankful. I was go. I came from church, but usually I go to church and do our worship. I lead the worship and all that. And then do we work at the business office and they left and I got everything. Then on my way home, and I know I had to, because before I left, I know I had to get gas, but I couldn't stop on the way to church. So I knew when I was coming home, I had to stop because I live away from the church. So on my way, I'm like, and I usually go to Sam's Club. I'm sorry. I'm not, it's not a plug or anything. That's just where I go. It's a good, it, it, Sam, they do me right all the time. Thank you, God. So I went, I went there and I'm just driving and all of a sudden I'm seeing these people standing outside with these huge um, uh, boards, like these signs. And then when I got up close, I said, free gas. I'm like, free gas? I said, hold on now. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving, but this is going to be a good Thanksgiving. I said, free gas, because you thank God for the little things, because everything is important nowadays. I mean, and the prices have gone sky high. So one, one portion, that's going to make a day. I said, free gas. And then when I got closer, I saw the name of this church that, that we know it's in the area. And it's, it's, it's known probably pretty much worldwide, I would think. So I said, oh, I said, how are they going to do that? Because I'm seeing lines of people that say, how are they giving all these people gas? Because I mean, it's every. So I came up closer because I didn't know what it was about. I didn't talk to anyone. Which I just saw the entrance. They were waving with the signs. So I kept on driving. I went in. And then we got to a certain point where we had to talk to one of their, um, I guess, a member of the church who was orchestrating everything. And, she, and they told us, you know, what's going on? We're giving free gas, but we need you to register here. Would you like free gas? And I said, yeah, sure. I'm not going to pass up free nothing. <laughs> This is really bad. So I said, yes, she said, but if you do, could you register? And I was like, register for what? Because I, I'm one person, I don't sign. I don't do anything until I know what's going on. That's just how, yes. That's the wise way to do things. So she said, register. I said, you register for the church. I said, oh, and I said, she said, just so that you could be in our mailing list and we could send you, um, you know, different things. And if you need to visit us, you can know where we're at and everything. So I said, sure. I mean, I'm a child of God, whether I go to one church or not, children of God all over the place. I embrace them and I celebrate them because we're all here about God's mission. So they had a QR code. I guess everybody's getting QR codes and you scanned it and you got right into their, into their database or whatever. And then she gave me this card and she said, go on close. I said, do I just get show it to them again? She said, yeah. So then later on by the pumps, they had all these different people from their church who was at 
at each pump. Like there was about, it's about 10 different pumps, I think, in that one Sam's Club gas station. And so I said, okay, and they came and I said, what do we do? He said, well, just use your membership card and then we'll pay for it after that. I said, oh, so I gave them the membership card and I showed them the card they give us. because And this wonderful thing is they give you the card from their church and they said, explain the salvation, explain their pastor, show their pastor and his wife there. And it's just explaining stuff. So it's kind of like a tool to minister and to witness. But then at the same time, they're blessing people for Thanksgiving. And I was like, oh, bless God. And he, I put my card in, got the membership in, and he paid for the gas. And they pumped it for you and everything. I said, my God. I mean, that just made my day because you don't get that too often. First of all, you don't get that too often. And then now with the prices of gas, I mean, hey, every pump, every, every car full is a blessing. So I thank God. So this is just something... But it was just a little, it was a suddenly. And that's something I've been praying about. And God's word says, God, there's a part, I think we mentioned that on the father conversation. God is going to give you so suddenly surprises. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know how. And you need to be thankful for it. So before I left, I made sure I told him, thank you, sir. And have a happy Thanksgiving. And he was the same way. I said, you have to understand that when you stay in the presence of God, he will take care of you. I mean, he will, bring, I mean, this is, and I didn't have to stop because I almost didn't stop there because I had planned to go lower down because I had to do some transactions at the bank and then go. And I just said, let me just go. Today was my day for free gas. And the thing about these things, when you're thankful for the little things God does, what it does is it encourages you, it encourages you to believe for the big things. We're believing for big things, not just in my private life, in my family life, but also in this, in my companies and all these, even the father reach and what we want to do for these young people. These are things that you cannot do on your own. God has to make a way for them to happen because they're big, audacious um, goals, but in all things, give thanks. And God was just, this was just a little nugget. God was saying, I got you, girl. Don't worry about the thing. I got you. And that is what God will do for us. If, when, when you're thankful and you have a heart of gratitude, perspective, that little stuff, some people say, oh, it's just gas. No, the perspective is if God can do that, he can do even more. And we're thankful to him because he takes care of us. And not that you do not have money to buy the gas, but hey, why spend it if somebody's giving it to you? And you don't know what else could come down the road that you may have to spend that money on. So it's perspective and thanking God and having an attitude of gratitude 24 seven, no matter what's going on, no matter what people do, you are blessed. That's why I tell people your value is enormous. God will move heaven and earth to take care of you. When you understand that it will change your mindset, it will change how you deal in life. It will change how you deal with situations, how you deal with people. You are just operating in a whole other level, a whole different level and dimension that puts you above situations, above circumstances. You're not all in the gutter, digging the gutter with everybody else. You're up on a different level because now you're operating with thanksgiving. You're operating in love. You're operating in peace. You're operating in forgiveness. And now God can use you and he can bless you because he can trust you. And so that's the thing we have to understand. Your gratitude, empowered gratitude, when you're thankful, it does so much for you. If you show thankful, thankfulness to people who do things for you, you will be surprised at what, how many doors it could open if you just thank for the people, if you just say thank you, if you just say, uh, you just show, uh, uh, just have a little bit of manners, a little bit of cooth when you deal with people, just being nice. I remember I was working in this place and I don't know what was going on. I think a couple of the employees were fussing or something. And then this one guy, he was, he was a mess because he was, a, but he was, he was a very friendly guy. And he said, why don't everybody just be nice? It's just, just be nice to each other. It will just make such a world of difference. And I'll never forget that. That was years ago, 20, probably 20 plus years ago. But I will never forget it because it's like, just be nice, being nice, being thankful, having a good attitude will take you a long ways that being mean will not take you. And you have to know that and understand that. So that just blessed my spirit. I thought I'd share that with you today. That's a way you can pay for it. When we talk about value for it, that's people valuing for it. They left their church. This is Sunday morning. They should be in church. And they're a pretty good sized church, pretty big church. And they're outside. And then I saw the pastor. <laughs> I saw him in the park. I didn't, he didn't see me. I mean, I was driving, but I know them because I see them on the television all the time. I said, oh, there's a pastor. I didn't go up to him. I mean, I, I'm not one of those. I'm not a groupie at all. <laughs> not in the least. I'm like, oh, there's a pastor. And he was in the parking lot. So that let me know they may not have been having service today or probably somebody else was preaching or whatever. But they were out. In, and that's how I was telling people with all what's going on with COVID, sometimes you're like, well, everybody's not in the church and people are not coming back. No, God said, go in the highways and byways and find people. That's what he used to do back in the day. Like I grew up doing that. My dad still does when, we were, when, I, when he was a pastor of a church. We would have certain times, especially the summertime, where we would go out in the streets and minister to people. You can't get away from that no matter how big your church gets. 
As a matter of fact, the bigger your church, the more you should do it because you have a bigger impact. You can go further than a lot of the little churches can. And so when you do that, it's like you're not waiting for them to come to you. And that's what we we're talking about even in our, um, our, our seminar yesterday and even in our, 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 our online courses. And when we talk here, stop waiting for people to do things for you. Stop waiting for people to come and save you. Stop waiting for people to always bring to you. Go out and get them because they're on the highways. And that's something that's for me, too, because I'm, I'm getting more in that mindset. You don't, it's not always going to come to you. You may have to go get it. You may have to go minister to the souls. If a lot of people are not in your churches because of what, the COVID and everybody's home and all that, why don't we just go outside? Because it's safer to be outside from what they said that being a closed in area and go and minister. So they took the Thanksgiving Sunday to go and minister to people and give, and, and you could, they were having fun out there. I mean, they were just enjoying themselves and they were out there pumping the gas and talking to the people in the parking lots and all that good stuff. That's what God wants us to do. Get innovative ideas to minister to people, to lift up people, to get people, to minister. The more you give to people and you demonstrate love, that's something we talk about. Demonstrate love, live love out, live out love. Live out love, L-O-V. Live, live out love, live. Yeah, I think that's it. Live out love, I think that's why I said it. Live out love and let it be a demonstration of love to people out there. Because that's what's going to draw them. Not necessarily you fussing at them, not you telling them what to do. Just live out love, demonstrate love to them. And they will come. And they will respect you. And that is what God wants us to be to the world. We may we have to get different ideas, different ways, how to do it. But if you stay with God, he will show you every time how to be what he's called you to be. A scripture we have. going to look at a lot of scriptures. Let me see. Hold on one second. One we're going to look at is 1 Corinthians 1, 4 to 5. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God, which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, that in everything you are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge. God, he's thanking God for the believers, the people of God. He's thanking God for them. And for the grace of God, which is given to them. What an awesome thing to do. Let's look at some scriptures. I'm gonna, I had a whole list of them. I said, let me instead of picking one, let me just go through all of them. One that we all know, Psalm 100, Psalm 100 and verse 4. Enter his gates, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Enter is good. Before you even come to pray and whatever, you come in with thanksgiving. Say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my health, my strength, my family. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for blessing me. You just keep thanking. If you think of everything God has done for you in one day, you could keep thanking him all day because he's been so good. He continues to blow our minds. Now, when they had a whole bunch of them, so we're just going to go through all of them and see what's going on here. The Leviticus 7.12. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the, the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes min, mingled with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. So he's giving thanks there for food, the food that God's given to them. Verse 713, beside the cakes, he, sh he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offering. So you're not going to give, every time you give a, a sacrifice unto God, you have to give it to Thanksgiving. That's what he's saying. If you're offering cakes, if you're offering whatever it is, food, if you're offering a lamb, if you're offering praise, it has to be done with Thanksgiving. He wants everything you offer, excuse me, everything you offer to him to be done with Thanksgiving. Everything you offer to God must be done with Thanksgiving. That's the way he wants it. That's the only way he's going to accept it. Verse 15, and the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for Thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. So you have to eat Thanksgiving. Leviticus 22, 29, and when he will offer a sacrifice of Thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. You have to, out of your will, you have to want to be thankful. You have to want to thank God. It's something that has to come from your heart. God is looking for your motivation. He is looking at your heart. Another one, Nehemiah eleven seventeen, And Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, was the principal to begin the thanksgiving in prayer. And Babukiah, 
the second among his brethren, and Abda, the son of Shamua, the son of Gal Galal, the son of Jeduthun. They had to, they had principal people to give thanks. That's in the Bible. Another one, Nehemiah 12, 8. Moreover, the Levites, Jeshua, Benui, Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, which was over the thanksgiving, he and his brethren. They, they had people who were over thanksgiving. That's how important it was. You had to have people who were designated just to give thanks. Nehemiah 12, 27. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem, to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgivings and with singing, with cymbals, psalteries, and with hearts. They had people designated to give God thanks. It wasn't just a little thing where you just say, oh, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you. No, it was a designated part of the service. It was a principal part of the service to give God thanks, to lift up his name with symbols, psalteries, and hearts. It was designated. Nehemiah 12, 46, where in the days of David and Asaph of old, there were chief of the singers, the chief of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. Chief of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. The chief singers have to be given praise and thanksgiving. It has to be a must. Your thanksgiving has to be part of your singing and praise. And I've been in praise and worship. And let me tell you something. It can't just be about the songs. Because I've learned in my little time that a lot of people up there singing ain't really about Jesus. And we've heard the stories in all the umpteen churches all over the place of the, what happens in the worship teams. Again, you have to understand who was in charge of worship and how he ended. Satan was in charge of worship, the most beautiful angel of all. He could sing, he could play, he could do everything, but his heart wasn't right. His heart was about himself. He desired to get the praise that God was getting. When you get in there, that's when you pollute your worship. That's why I say you have to make sure your worship is right. So we as singers, I always tell the worship, you have to dedicate yourself to God. You're not coming here because of you. And when I see those things, when you see those kind of spirits moving around, you got to nip it in the bud because it messes up worship. And one thing about God, if you mess up his worship, he's going to mess you up. That's what people, he does not appreciate. He said, I, what, I am seeking for worshipers to worship being spirit and truth. Nothing about themselves, nothing about pollution. I want a, uh, I don't want no strange fires up here. I want a pure worship. And that's why right there, he has to be designated to give God praise. And in the midst of your praise, you have to have praise and thanksgiving. It's a must. He requires it of us. Psalm 26, 7, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy, thy wondrous works. Psalm 50, 14, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the most high. So what we're seeing there, when you offer unto God thanksgiving, he, that would help motivate us to pay our vows unto God. We have to have a thankful God. God is requiring it. And these are all, I'm, I'm put all the scriptures here so we can see how many scriptures uh, uh, really how important thanksgiving is to God. Psalm 69, 30, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. I will make him great. That's what magnify means. I will make him great with thanksgiving. I will tell him how much he's done for me. I will thank him for all he's going to do and all he will do and all he has done. We thank God. We praise him but we also give him thanks. Psalm 95, two, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. Come into his presence with what thanksgiving? He requires it. He wants you to enter the gates. The, the gate is the first place you enter. If you're coming into his presence, come in with praise and thanksgiving. You have to be thankful to him. He was very angry when, when you had the 10, the 10 lepers and nine of they were all healed and only nine, and only one came back to say thanks. I was giving them more credit than they had. One came back to give, he said, where are the nine? Didn't I heal everybody? But only one was thankful. And you would think, that they, oh, you, oh, I'll just excuse them. They were just a little happy. So they had to run and tell their family and friends. So that's why I didn't, no, God looked down on that thing and he made sure, it, he put a note of it in the Bible. <laughs> he made sure the world noted what they did. That's how you know when something's important to God. He stressed on that so much. He said, I don't care how much, how many family members they have to tell. You need to come back to me and give thanks and be thankful for what was done to you. And that's the attitude we used to have, not just with God, but with everybody we meet. We have to be thankful. It's important that we're thankful. When we don't demonstrate thankfulness, we are not pleasing God. God is looking at that like you all are a hot mess. You are not thankful? 
Psalm 95, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, Psalm 104, we said that the right enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalm 107, 22, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, God. Psalm 116, 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. There's a sacrifice of thanksgiving. That's what you offer to God. There are different sacrifices, but here we see it's a special sacrifice of thanksgiving. Offer it up to God. This time, Thanksgiving is a special time where we celebrate and we're thankful. Tell the people in your life you're thankful. Tell God you're thankful. Tell people why you're thankful. Give thanks at your table before you eat. Never, ever lose an opportunity to be thankful. God respects and requires it. Psalm 147, 7, sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises upon the harp unto our God. Sing with thanksgiving. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Isaiah 51, 3, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. God expects us to have a voice of thanksgiving and a melodious voice for thanksgiving. It is important to give God thanks. Jeremiah 13, 19, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few, my God. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Do you see what God does when you give thanks? He's talking about the children of Israel. And, out, and he's going to talk about you too. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. When you're done with the thanksgiving, and I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify, not you, not man, not, I will glorify. When I glorify them, nobody can bring them down. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. When God glorifies you, you are unstoppable in the earth. That's why I tell people, stop looking to man for stuff and look to God. Because when God does something, ain't no man stopping you. If they try, they will be stopped, but you won't be stopped. Understand the God you serve. Be thankful to him for what he's done to you and watch him do great things in your life. Amos 4, 5, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven. Now that's bread. And proclaim, leaven is like the yeast, I think, yeah. And proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, all ye children of Israel, saith the Lord God. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. They did different thanksgiving. Like this one, they had to put yeast, like the breads, in there. Jonah, oh my God, there's so many of them. Okay, I'm, I'm almost done. Jonah 2.9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. Do you notice there's a, a second time they're saying that because of the thanksgiving, and it says, I will pay the vow. So when we're thankful to God, it helps us to pay our vows to God. It helps us to pay our vows, whether it's your tithe and offering, whether it's something you said, God, I will do. You make sure you do it, you do it, and you don't forget to do it. But when you have a thankful heart towards God, you notice it's saying, I will pay that I have vowed. And then it says, salvation is of the, is of the Lord. When you're, when you're thankful to God, you recognize what he's done in your life. You, re, you recognize what he can do. You recognize that you need him. That's why he says, salvation is of the Lord. No man can save me, but God can and you recognize his, his important input in your life and what he can do and what he can, what, what no man can stop because he can do it for you. Second Corinthians 4, 15, for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many Redound to the glory of God. All things are for your sakes. And he's doing it and he expects to get thanksgiving. Because he's saying it's for your sakes that the abundant grace might through thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. So the grace coming through the thanksgiving, when you're thankful, it, it, it motivates God to 
impart his grace unto you. Second Corinthians 9, 11, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. When you're enriched, God blesses you. He expects to get the thanksgiving. He doesn't expect you to forget to thank him and think it's you. <laughs> it's, it's like the pot, the pot couldn't kill her. You're putting the cart before the horse. The God is blessing you. All of a sudden, you start thinking it's you blessing yourself. You have to be very careful. God does not look good on these things. He doesn't look kindly to that. It's like you are not grateful. 2 Corinthians 9, 12, for the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. There's something I'm seeing, never mind. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. The administration abounds because of the thanksgiving. It is it, it, it grows. It, it, it gets it gets a lot. It's enlarged because of the thanksgivings unto God. When you give thanks to God, He will cause everything to be massive in your life, to abound in your life, because He realizes He can trust you, and that you recognize where your blessings come from, and you're not ungrateful. Philippians four six be be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Even your prayers have to be done with thanksgiving. Even the fact that you're letting your request be made known to God, you're asking God for things, it has to be done with thanksgiving. It has to be watered with thanksgiving. God recognizes thanksgiving. He, he honors a thankful heart. He honors a grateful heart. He honors gratitude. He wants you to show gratitude to him because he, is, he has done so much for you and he loves you so much and he will continue to do great things for you. But he requires thanksgiving. And then Colossians 2, 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So you're rooted and you're built up in God. Your foundation is strong. You're established in faith. As ye have been taught, now you're abounding with thanksgiving. So when your foundation is set and your faith is set, everything you do now, you're abounding, but it's with thanksgiving. You're doing everything, but you're thankful. God is blessing you, but you're thankful. He's blessing you with money, but you're thankful. He's blessing your family, but you're thankful. He's blessing your, your home, but you're thankful. He's blessing you in every area, but you're always uh, careful to give God thanks. That's what he wants. That's what he requires. That pleases him. And it's important for us to always keep that in the forefront of our minds, no matter what God gives us. Lord, help me to be thankful. Lord, help me to bless you in everything that you're doing in my life. Lord, help me not to get so ungrateful that I think I'm doing everything when you're doing so much for me. Lord, keep my mind, keep my body, keep my spirit, keep my heart that you may be pleased. Allow God to look on you and smile because of your attitude. You have an attitude of gratitude, and that brings glory to him. I have a few points right there. Live a life of gratitude. Everything you do, live a life of gratitude. Oh, sorry, um. Live a life of gratitude. You go into the store, somebody does something, thank you. You go into the anywhere and somebody does, be thankful. Somebody blesses you. Somebody gives you a, a, a pass in the um like when you're going through a line or going to wait for something, drive through whatever, and they tell you to go in front of them, say thank you. Don't think you're entitled. Some people are always thinking they're entitled. And that's one thing my parents always taught us growing up. You are not entitled to a thing. You've got to work for everything you have because God expects you to work hard. When you live a life of gratitude, every time somebody does something, you have to be thankful for it. It doesn't just show uh, uh, a good faith and, and so to the person that does it for you, it shows God that you have a good, that you have a good heart, that you have a good attitude. And people will want to do things for you because you're thankful. They want to help you because you're thankful. And it shows forth character and the kind of person you are. Number two, demonstrate your gratitude. Don't just tell people, oh, I'm thankful. Demonstrate it. How are you thankful? You helped somebody in the street because somebody helped you. 
you're in the drive through and you want to pay for someone's meal, you do that because somebody helped pay. Like I, somebody just did a little the gas thing. I'm going to think of how I can help somebody else. That's the way of showing gratitude. Demonstrate it to people. Say it to people. Tell the people you love that you love them and you're thankful for them because you don't want to wait till they're dead and then you're screaming, oh, da, 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 da. but you didn't tell them anything when they were alive. It's, it makes no sense when they're gone. You only, it makes sense while they're here for you to give them all their roses. Demonstrate your thanks. Do things to people. Do things to people that you that can't do things to you. And a lot of people are like that. They will do things for they're very transactional. And there's time for transactional uh, relationships. But there are times most times where you could just do something for people, even if they can't do anything for you. And that demonstrates your gratitude to God for all that He's done for you, for all that He's brought you through, for all that He's provided for you. When you demonstrate your gratitude to others, God sees this person I can trust because they have an attitude of thankfulness. Their, their, their grad, the attitude of gratitude empowers them to do for others, to build up others, to bless others because they themselves have been blessed. Number three, build with a thankful attitude. Whatever you build, whether you build your business, you build your family, you build your marriage, you build our relationships, you build your career, you build your academics, whatever it is you're building, build, but build with a thankful attitude. That will build, uh, help you to build a lasting and strong, whatever it is you're building. Because if the foundation has thankfulness in it, you, you could never go wrong. You always, you always see ways to bless others. You always see, well, somebody did this for me. I am here because of what people did. So I, I have to bless somebody else. I have to minister to somebody else. Or the people who've done something to me, I will give something back to you just to show my gratitude. Or to God, I bring my praise and worship to you continuously because you've been good to me. You've done so much for me. I can't help but to live for you and please you and worship you. All these things, and it also denotes a, 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 a character, um, um, a sense of humility in you. You're humbled by what God has done for you, by what has happened in your life. And it, it, it propels you to help people. It propels you to pay it back, to pay it forward because somebody did it for you. And that's what thankfulness will do for you. If you're thankful in life, you will never be a miserable person. You'll never be trying to cut down people because you're like, oh my God, I could be there, but for the grace of God. That's why I look at the human trafficking victim and I, 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 I look at any type of slavery period and I'm like, it just boils me. It just, I, it just makes me, I, I have to do something to help because I am so privileged and I never had to grow up with these kind of added things in my life. I, and I think that's what makes me one of the, the freest people on earth because I just, I cannot take constraints and all that stuff because we were made to be free to live for God and do what he's called us to do. And that's why I said, I'm glad I was born and I was born where I was born to the parents I was born to, because I just, some of these crazies I hear in the news, I'm like, no, I would not make it two days, not Alina Chong. I wouldn't make it. And that's why every time I hear that those things happen to people, it makes me, okay, we have to do something to help. We have to get these people out of this hot mess. What in the world? In the 21st century, we're still going through this? That is just unbecoming. It doesn't make sense. And I said, we have to, and it's all again because of greed and money. And that's why I said, if you're not thankful, you'll be greedy. If you notice people who are greedy and will do anything for money, they're not thankful because they don't understand what it took to get them to where they are. And when God blesses you, you know that you, it will, thankfulness keeps you from being covetous. Thankfulness keeps you from being greedy. And thankfulness keeps you from being violent and, and mean and all that kind of stuff. Because you realize I am here, but for the grace of God, I was born to the family I was born to. I was born with the privileges God has, has what, what, God birthed me into. And every day I thank God for it. Because if it wasn't for that, I could have been born in a situation like some of these people where their families sell them. And just, I mean, I can't understand five years old and you sell your child to do prostitution. I don't even understand. Like your mind has to be so warped and out of control to even sell your child. Much as for selling into prostitution, five years old in India and these countries. And I'm like, what? But I'm thankful because I had parents who not only looked over me like a hawk, they would still look over me and I'm an adult. And I'm like, okay, daddy, I'm an adult. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they want to make sure that your, your interest, your best interest, interest comes to fruition. They don't want to, they want to make sure that you come out well and you do well. And that's what's important in life. And when you think of those things, that should make you thankful enough to help others. So people who are thankful help. 
People who are thankful build up. People who are thankful have a handout to give to people, to bring them up from their situations and not just see people in, in dire need and do nothing. That's the difference. That's what the, um, the Good Samaritan story was about because he could not see the, the guy on the side of the road beat up and, 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 and destitute and leave him there. But the thing is, look at the other people that walk right by him. The, the rabbi, the priest, and what is it? I think the rich, the rich guy and somebody else walked right by the guy and left him there. And the unthinkable, the unlikely person is the one that stepped up and said, I will help that guy. That's what you need to be. And it's huge. When you see people do that, it's because they're thankful. When you see people with a lot and they hand out to give to others, it's because they have a thankful heart. Somewhere down the road, something, somebody did something for them. Somebody gave them a hand up and that propels Thanksgiving in them. So they now, it always propels you to help other people and bring them up from their situation. And that's how we should be. Next, in everything, give thanks. Everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, give thanks. And that's what God's telling us. In everything, give thanks. It's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerned. Give thanks. God wants us to give thanks. It doesn't look good. And that's another thing. If you keep hearing me, I mean, I'll keep saying this man's quote. And he probably, <laughs> but then I'm giving him publicity. So you should be good. Life happens for you, not to you. It happens for your good. You don't know what is going to happen, but later down the road, you realize if I hadn't gotten strong in this area, I would not be able to handle this area. And for me, what I've noticed is whenever I'm going through challenges in one area, it's because God's about to promote me. Now, note what I said, not man's about to promote me, God. And in my life and in my family's life, it's literally been everything you see, or every promotion you see, God has given into it, literally God. Because for some reason, people always try to, I, I'm not sure if it's jealousy, strife, I'm not sure what it is, always try to keep you from your promotion. But let me tell you something, when God knows that you're ready for it, ain't no man can stop it. That's why I tell you, stay with God. He promotes you. And he usually promotes you in the, with the most unlikely people. And that's why I never lived, my mom always told us that, treat everybody well, because you don't know who's going to be a blessing to you, and you don't know when you're going to need them. So if you treat everybody good, Whoever helps you, it will be a blessing. You, you won't be like, oh my God, I treat that person so bad. Never do that because you don't know who's going to be a blessing. And that has been a key for me. I mean, sometimes for me, I'm a, I, I've been a Christian since I was five years old. I've loved the Lord, been in church. But a lot of people that have done a lot of things for me have not been Christians. A lot of people that have helped to propel me have not been Christians. Now, a lot of Christians have helped me and have done things for me. But a lot of things are not necessarily Christians. That's because you live your life in a way where you, you are, you, you live with character and morality so that when you go out in the world, people can see you and they will help you even if they don't necessarily like you or they don't necessarily know you. But just because of how you live, you have thankfulness in your heart, you walk in love, you walk with respect, you carry yourself with respect, you talk to people with respect, you don't allow people to demean your value, you carry yourself with value, understand your value and help bring up the value in others. When people see that in you, they will help you, even if they don't necessarily know you or like you. And sometimes that's why God said he would give you favor with God and man. God will give you favor with people you don't necessarily know. So that's why you have to maintain the heart of thanksgiving. So when you get into the presence of these people, you're not caught up in everything else. You're caught up with giving thanks to God first for allowing you the opportunity. And then you're thankful to the people for the opportunity. But you never let that opportunity outweigh your thankfulness and outweigh your recognition of who gave you the opportunity because that's what some people get to you give them one opportunity and it blows their mind and they start acting crazy and then they mess the whole thing up because they don't understand the purpose for the opportunity stay thankful stay humble and god will do great things in your life walk in love be a blessing to others next expectant gratitude have expectant gratitude thanking god for the great things you are expecting thank god for the great things you are expecting and that happened to me today i've been praying about a lot god show this to me and help us and we thank you for the opportunity you're giving us and we thank you for the new areas you're taking us to and you're praying but sometimes you don't expect it because you don't know when it's going to come and then today this little thing right here with the gas it just was like whoa that's a sudden thank you god and then it reminds you that's how quick god can bless you that's how suddenly it can happen in your life, but you're expecting it. You just don't know when it's going to come. There's one thing my dad was talking about yesterday in the Empowered Valley Forum. He was referring to the, 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 the 10 virgins and five were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones didn't stay ready. They were partying and didn't even check on their lamps. 
you know, then check on the lamps of the oil. That's why people say during the winter time, make sure you keep your, your car gassed up because you never know when the snow comes and you can't get out and you need to have gas in your car. For the most part, I do that, but sometimes I forget. And yeah, but in this case, that's what happened to them. They got carried away with the partying and having the fun. They forgot to keep their, their lamps on. Then they're asking the wise ones to give them oil. They said, no, we can't give you our oil because we are not going to be caught on ready for when the bridegroom comes. Stay ready. When you stay ready, whatever, whenever the suddenlies come your way, you are ready to, 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 to take a hold of the opportunity and run with it. Because some people, they're not ready. They want things from God, but their capacity, they don't have the capacity to receive it because they haven't been preparing themselves, staying in the word, learning, uh, training themselves, teaching themselves, learning from God, learning from, from prayer, staying in prayer, asking God to show them things, building up themselves. They haven't been building up themselves in the most holy faith. So when the thing comes, they're like, oh, oh, it's here like that? How much am I going to do? No, you're not supposed to get ready then. You're supposed to be ready. And if you keep that attitude when Jesus comes, which is the ultimate, you better make sure you're ready because then you, if you're not ready, then you're done. There's no other oh, there's no other alternative for you. You just have to go through the tribulation, get saved, and whatever goes on there. But you have to stay ready. Maintain a heart of gratitude. Thank God for the great things you're expecting and, ex and expect to see them. And when they show up, you may be a little stunned, but because you've been praying and keeping your eyes on God, it's like, oh, well, that's a good donation, and you keep on going with it, but you're ready to do what God has to you. And God, that's why we want to empower gratitude, live a life of gratitude, demonstrate your gratitude, build with a thankful attitude, in everything give thanks, and have expectant gratitude. And watch that attitude of gratitude propel you to where God wants you to. Because when you praise and worship and enter your gate with thanksgiving and praise, He's able to open the whole thing for you, the whole house. You're coming through the gates with that. He said, come on in and enjoy all the blessings I have for you. And that's how life is. When you have that attitude of thanksgiving and, 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 and praise and you're honoring God and you're honoring people in your life, then the, the doors are open. The doors are wide open to you and the opportunities are open to you because you have the right attitude and you have the right mindset and you're coming and knowing that your God is able to do everything for you and he will if you have the right attitude towards him, empowered gratitude. So as you go through your, your, your Thanksgiving celebration, and I know it's going to be awesome because all, I mean, mine's going to be awesome. I know yours is going to be awesome. As you go through, just have that attitude and doing everything God wants you to do and being everything God wants you to be and blessing people and blessing your family and not just, just cooking, but cooking that little, that food with a smile and share and serving it up with a smile, grand style. Because you have an attitude of gratitude. You are empowered. Your gratitude empowers you to do great things, empowers you to be what God has called you to be. And he's going to show up on your behalf because you have the right attitude. Oh, my God. And I hope that blesses your heart because it blesses me. Like I said, every time I share with you, I get blessed because I am learning as I teach. And I thank God for that. So we want to celebrate you. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Do the great things God has called you to do. Remember on our favor of a great God.com from yesterday, I think, the 20th through the 29th, I believe. You're going to have 50% um, off of everything you purchase. If you use the, the code on there, it's EMPOWVAL, E M P O W V A L, and you'll see it on the, it's flashing on the, um, on the website. And if you use that, you have 50% of all items. So that should, you could, you could start buying gifts for your friends and your families. And then at the same time, remember, you're supporting us as we help all young people underprivileged all over the world to be everything God has called them to be. Check us out. Give us donations. Be a blessing. Check out everything we're doing. We still have the online courses, online course one, then online course B, your business is coming out. So we just, when we're just busy doing everything we can, putting everything out there. And so we can be a blessing. It's all about being a blessing. It's not just about us. It's about you and all that God is calling us to do. Remember, we also have a consultation, Father Consulting and Investments, I think LLC. Yeah. <laughs> so check us out there making the point. If you know people who businesses who need a point, who need people to help consultants, to help them get on the right path in their businesses, to help them make the right decision, to help instill the right behavior in your organization. It's all about making sure everybody has the right mindset so they can be productive. That's something we do as well. If you call us, schedule an appointment with us so we can get in there and help your business and help your personal, uh, your personal life, your personal home and finances, whatever it is you need. 
just call, set up the appointments, go on the website, you can set up the appointments and we can meet with you and make it happen for you. We wanna thank God for you. It is three o'clock, it's up. The time, our time is up, but we have enjoyed being with you. We have enjoyed sharing with you and we hope you have an awesome holiday season. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, enjoy your families, share with them, be thankful and continue to have Father Conversations continue to have father conversation and until we see you next time bye bye